Rust is causing a bit of a problem with Linux. If you're not aware, there is a huge movement right now in the GNU community to create a rewrite of all the core utils in Linux in Rust. The reason for this, Rust claims to be a memory safe language, which means that you cannot write code in Rust that allows an attacker to do things like buffer overflows, use after freeze, etc. Hey there. Editor low level here. I do want to highlight that I acknowledge that CVERS exists. Okay, continue. A buffer overflow, for example, is this notorious attack. It allows the attacker to use their data to control certain components of the CPU, like the stack pointer and the return address to give them control of your computer, right? Not a great place to be. So as a result, in Ubuntu 2510, there and it, there's an entire movement, there's a plan to have a drop-in replacement for the core utils that is written entirely in Rust. And as you may imagine, rewriting anything in any language ever is not going to go extremely well if you do it. Two main issues being talked about on Twitter right now are, first of all, sort. The rewrite for sort uh, does not finish if you have a one line file that is four gigabytes. While that is an extremely niche edge case, it still does not meet the original functionality of the C version. And then more importantly, more egregiously, um, the checksum implementation in Rust is somehow 17 times slower. Kind of defeats the whole purpose of Rust, which says that it, that it has the same performance with less of the overhead. I am genuinely confused. If someone knows more about this than I do, please comment down below. Tell me why this is happening, because I'm actually confused. Now, I talked about this in a previous video a little bit, where the Ubuntu organization Canonical is rewriting one of the, the binaries that's very important in Rust, okay? The binary in question here is sudo, or sudo. I got a lot of flack for saying sudo. I say sudo. No, I don't. I say sudo, you can say sudo, you can sudo these. All right, now the reason why uh, this is such an important binary that chose to be rewritten in Rust, if you do a which sudo, and then you do lstackla um, which sudo, right? You will see that this is a binary that has a little S in the uh, the execute bit there. That is a set UID binary. When you want to update packages on Linux, or you want to make, you know, your computer do privileged things, sudo apt install whatever, for example, you have to use this sudo command. I locked the computer in the process of doing that. Very good. You have to use this sudo command, okay? And what sudo does is it is a set UID binary, which means when you execute the binary, it becomes the privilege of the owner of the binary. The reason for this is sudo is used to make you either root or another user. And so to do this, you have to literally have it as a set UID binary. Now, because of this, it has been the target of a bunch of attacks. It has been the target of many CVEs in the past. Very notable one here, CVE 2021-3156 is a heap-based buffer overflow in sudo. What this allows an attacker to do is exploit a vulnerability in the sudo binary as it's running. And by exploiting this bug, they get code control as root. Because again, sudo is a set UID binary. Now, let's be real. You can't stop zero is from happening. But one thing you can do is defend against them with today's video sponsor, ThreatLocker. ThreatLocker is a zero trust endpoint protection platform designed around stopping hackers from getting a foothold in your network. Here, we're on a workstation at Big Corp Incorporated LLC, where a user has downloaded a suspicious PowerShell script, and they're about to run it. Not great. Because ThreatLocker knows the baseline of this computer using its learning mode, where it learned what is allowed during a good baseline, ThreatLocker will detect this and block the execution of the script. Someone in the sock for this network will get an alert and can either deny it or, my favorite feature, allow it with ThreatLocker's ring fencing technology. They can run the script but deny access to other parts of the computer, like the user's files, or even deny internet access to the script. And the sock even gets the ability to run the script in a sandbox environment to see what it does before they either approve or deny the access. Using my link right here, go check out ThreatLocker, and the next time that Zero Trust comes up at your company, give ThreatLocker a shot. Thanks again, ThreatLocker, for sponsoring this video. Back to the video. And so for me, as a security guy, I'm like, oh, the threat model is person who is not root can traverse that boundary and become root. That's a good target for a rewrite. What I don't understand is this weird obsession with Rust rewrites for tools that don't cross a security boundary. Like one that I talk about a lot is the uh, the Zed text editor. Zed is a text editor that is written in Rust, right? I have no problem if you use Zed. I think Zed is probably a great tool. It's probably very fast, obviously much faster than VS Code, for example. But my thing is like, there is no threat model for a text editor aside potentially ingesting a malicious file such that I am nervous about opening files in a way that Rust would meaningfully solve. And therefore, I don't think writing a text editor in Rust meaningfully solves a security problem. And so again, what this implies to me is that they are going to try to rewrite 
all of the core utils, all of these functional or all of these programs here in Rust. And the problem that I have with this is, is twofold. One, none of these binaries for the most part, I'm sure there's one or two that I'm missing, but generally speaking, none of these binaries have some threat model or threat boundary that they're guarding against. Like what is the threat model for sort? Like I'm given a malicious file that when I sort on it, it like ac exploits the binary. Okay, maybe, or like some, right? Someone asked me to sum up some numbers such that it overflows a buffer and I get hacked by it. Like, okay. But the problem this introduces is by doing a rewrite, you are potentially changing functionality that is already expected by users of this tool such that when you do your drop in replacement, other programs that downstream depend on sort and potentially sort changes functionality under the hood, you now have introduced potentially other vulnerabilities, other bugs in software for no meaningful trade-off in my opinion, when it comes to the re-implementation of this in Rust. And then same with checksum. We have issues where you're taking a binary where it performs some otherwise complex action, right? Sort being one, checksum being another. They are taking some kind of binary data. They have to run some algorithm on that data and then output something to the screen, right? That process of writing that code again is going to have mistakes. Even if you are literally, you know, John Cormack or whatever, I'm gonna name a random person, whatever. If you are somebody in the community who is, you know, a great beard programmer, you are still going to make mistakes, right? And so as a result, we're going to have these issues where new code comes up, even though it's memory safe, it may not be logic safe. It is a common misunderstanding, by the way, of Rust. Rust allows you to write memory bug free code. It does not allow you to write logic bug free code. You can still write a Rust program that is memory safe, but logically incorrect, such that a single line file runs in an infinite loop, right? Like that is a thing you can do in Rust. This will never seg fault in a way that is uh, exploitable by a hacker, but it is a vulnerability for someone who depends on this, right? From a DOS standpoint. LinuxSecurity.com, you know, a site that writes articles about Linux, you know, one of the things they talk about here is, you know, many security exploits stem from buffer overflows. And this is why we're doing it. It says, this is what security looks like in practice. We are writing code that cannot have memory related vulnerabilities. And it's like, okay, yes, I totally understand that for code that guards trust boundaries, right? The, like the core util suite does not do any of that. And I truly don't understand. I did, I did a podcast recently with uh, the Primogen, Casey Moratori and Trash, and he, Primogen, uh, cited apparently somewhere there's like a cultural reason people are like afraid of C maybe. And so because younger generations are more um, fine with Rust, they're trying to, from a cultural standpoint, change the code base. I don't like that opinion either because you know, what happens in 20 years when, you know, the, the Linus Torvalds of the world die off and like there is now the Linux kernel that needs to be maintained uh, and you have no one to maintain it, right? Like what, what does that look like um, from a, a culture standpoint, right? I think the culture should be within software development and software security, like code exists. Let's secure the code that needs to be secured and let's not waste time on projects that don't really do a ton, right? Again, and if you are on this project, by the way, I'm not shitting on this project. I think this is like a good idea generally from like a let's make code safer perspective, but I just don't, I truly don't understand why? And originally I didn't understand the hatred towards Rust because of the just rewrite it in Rust crowd. Um, and maybe, maybe I'm starting to get it now. Anyway, would Rust have solved this problem, guys? Would, would Rust have made this, you know, faster score? No. Come on. All right. See you guys later. Bye.